let's move on to the next. Uh, this is also going to be about depth-wise separable convolutions. I think this is the first paper that introduced that. I'm not sure. But uh, it gives us a new perspective on depth-wise separable convolutions. Let's see what the perspective is. We know about the inception. We covered it in class for Google Net. The paper says, uh, let's simplify that architecture. I don't like the fact that you do one by one by one by one convolution average pooling, three by three convolutions, five by five convolutions, seven by seven. I don't like that. Let's simplify stuff. Let's use only one by one and three by three convolutions. So it's a simplified inception module. And now let's just uh, rewrite the same thing in terms of group convolutions. We saw group convolutions in ResNext. So it's very similar to the ideas of ResNext. You do a single one by one convolution and then pick up a bunch of channels, let's say 10 of your channels, and then you do three by three convolutions on that 10 channels. And in the end, you just concatenate them. So this is group convolution. If you take this idea to the extreme, rather than having 10 channels, you can have a single channel. These are single channels, and then you are doing your three by three convolutions channel wise. So this is a new perspective that you start from inception, you simplify it, you do group convolutions. This is where you had res next, and then you take it to the extreme to give you depth-wise separable convolutions. Actually, this is just depth-wise convolution. It is gonna become depth-wise separable when you add a point-wise convolution on top of that. And point-wise convolution is just one by one convolution. So it's the same idea as before from a new perspective. And this is the macro structure of the network. There is some in entry flow. The middle flow is very simple. It's always these separable convolutions, same dimensionality, same kernel size, a shortcut connection, and then re you repeat that eight times. So the dimensionality doesn't change here. But the entry flow and the exit flow are responsible for changing the dimensions using strides. You have a stride of two by two, stride of two by two, another stride of two by two. And then they have different number of channels, 32, 64, 128, etc. 256, 728. Once the entry flow is done processing the image, it's going to give the output to the middle flow. The middle flow is going to do its job. And then the exit flow is going to take the output of the middle flow and in the end give us the probabilities for our logistic regression. This is how exception, and exception stands for extreme inception. This is how exception compares to inception v3, ResNet, and VGG. When you give it the same amount of capacity, when they have the same capacity or similar capacity in terms of parameter count, exception is doing better in terms of accuracy, both top one and top five. It actually trains better. What you're seeing is the validation accuracy during training. An exception is above inception v3. And in the previous paper, MobileNet, we saw that there is an activation, activation function between the three by three convolution and the pointwise one. It turns out you don't really need that. You can put a ReLU, you can put an ELU, and then you, put, you can put nothing, no activation, no nonlinearity, and actually that one is doing the best. So you can get rid of the nonlinearity between your depth-wise convolution and the point-wise convolution. Any questions here? So the, the depth-wise convolution is this image right above where you're just taking portions of your input and passing it to separate three by three convolutions or portions of your one by one output. But what is the point-wise? I'm a little confused where that comes in. Well, the point-wise is just the one by one convolution. Just this first one by one after the input? No, it's like this structure here. So you have your three by three, and then there is oh, okay. another okay. one by one convolution right after it. Okay, I see. That one is depth wise, and then you do, because depth wise is gonna do things channel wise. So your channels are now independent. Now you want to mix and match the information in your channels. That's why you add a one by one convolution. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions? The idea is the same as before, but uh, we are taking a look at the same concept from a different perspective. How does it fit? How does it compare with whatever that we learned so far in terms of inception, resnext, etc.? That's how it compares. Okay. 
And there is also one other contribution that you don't actually need this uh, ReLU here. You don't need that activation. 